Then I did a series of clouds, what I call clouds non-equivalence. It's kind of a reference to Stieglitz and Weston in the long tradition in photography of cloud photography. But this is like a man-made cloud. This is there's an industrial smokestack right below the frame. So um, a lot of the the clouds in these pictures are, you know, the, the whole series in a sense is about you know uh, ozone depletion and all the environmental issues that that we now face. It's impossible, uh, in a sense, to photograph clouds just simply for their beauty anymore. It's we know too much about what's going on, and so that informs the way we think about these. So, again, in the context of my cantos, it takes on sort of a little different um, uh, meaning. I think this brings us up to um, the mid-90s. Um, then I kind of had a breakthrough uh, um, moment, which was kind of exciting. Um, and that was, I went to uh, James Terrell's volcano in uh, 1988. And um, uh, he's having, I don't know if any of you are familiar with his work, but he's having like three retrospectives right now. And he's uh, well known for doing these what he calls homogeneous fields, where he creates either in a skylight or in a wall uh, a, an array of light that looks three-dimensional. You know, it, you feel like you're going into deep space. It's a, a powerful illusion. And he has a crater in the Arizona desert, and I went there to do a story on that for our Condé Nast Traveler magazine. And basically, there was no story to be had, but Miriam and I camped on top of this crater for two days. And I end up just as sort of a lark as making a photograph of the sky above his crater, which is a homogeneous field. And what I did there was is there's no horizon, there's no stars, there's no clouds, there's nothing to give you um, any sense of dimension or, 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 or anything. It's just like flat color field, like a color field painting. And if, when I took that back home, I looked at it and just, it didn't look like much, but I kept, it kept haunting me for a couple of years. And I realized that you know, the camera was invented um, as, uh, for, as for its three-point uh, perspective, you know, for its deep, um, giving deep uh, uh, Renaissance perspective uh, in space, sort of depicting space in that way. And um, here I was using the camera defying its purpose, and I kind of started to like that idea. Um, and I thought, well, could I create a photograph? Could I create a context for the photograph so that it would work? Um, even though it seems like I'm not photographing anything. And so what I did, and, I, and one of the things I do when I teach, I'll show a picture of a Char Charles Sheeler uh, factory, a beautiful, simple black and white photograph of a, uh, of a famous Charles Sheeler photograph. And I'll, I'll tell the students that if you title it um, uh, industry, it sounds kind of heroic and beautiful. If you title it polluter, then you get a very different takeaway from it. And if you title it Untitled, it tells you that it's art. And so uh, that to me was a, what I was thinking about with this work. I realized that you could take any image, and depending on the way you title it, it will create the context for understanding the work. So what I did with these is um, I looked at the map of the Western Desert, which was my subject. Um, and based on the way places were named, I would go there and I would photograph the sky. Again, no horizon line, nothing to give it away, just, just the field of light. And in the, the edge of the photograph, I would put the title of the place, and then I would also put the date and the minute it was, uh, or the moment that the picture was taken. Because the other component about this, um, so it might be Jerusalem City, Utah, um, at uh, you know, March 3rd, 1992, at uh, 3.08 p.m., something like that. And what that would do is, um, the other thing about photography that I was pushing against was this idea that it's the decisive moment. It's that single moment where you capture with a snap, uh, you stop people on the street in action or whatever. Here I'm photographing infinity at the ether, you know, into deep space. And um, uh, it just looks like a flat two-dimensional surface. So I loved all those um, edges about that were being created by the way the picture was made. So it's a series of photographs of just sky at different times of day, at dusk, at dawn, during the day. 
and these were printed really quite large, so they, they also played off of uh, color field painting, people like Rothko or Ad Reinhardt. And it really also exploited color in photography in a way that I hadn't before, just really, really focusing on, on the power of, of the medium. <clears throat> 